di setting setting bu, saya belum pernah nih bu soalnya bu iya kemarin kita lupa nggak koordinasi ya kalau yang udah udah nyambung ya. nggak apa-apa jangan khawatir kalau... langsung aja telepon antara Mas Amri dengan uh, Mas Teguh ya bu atau saya
Okay. Uh, there's no sound, ya, Amriya. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi dan salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Good morning, pagi. all. My name is Nokrusmana and I'm the moderator of the event today. On Friday, 23 July 2021, in the public lecture with the topic of development of Islamic finance since the birth of Islam 14 years ago. The material will be delivered by Professor Dato, Dr. Haji Abdul Murad, the Chief Executive Officer of East West International College. But first of all, there will be the welcoming and opening speech. The welcoming and opening speech will be delivered by our Vice Dean <coughs> of Academic and Student Affairs. Therefore, Vice Dean mm. for Academic and Students Affairs, Honorable Dr. Retno Martanti Endalestari, please, time is yours. Thank you, uh, Ibu Enok Rosmana. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih Bu Enok Rusmana. Good morning Dato. Dato Murad. Good morning. How are you today? Alhamdulillah Bu. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. I'm glad uh, I was able to meet Dato even at the Zoom meet this time, Dato. Personally, I apologize yeah, yeah. Uh, for the delay in plan to send my child, my child, yeah, to a week due to current situation. Yeah. yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No problem, no problem. Okay. Uh, I hope my child uh, school in your place. Uh, because the COVID-19 pandemic uh, has a situation yeah. like this. Right. Okay. Welcome and All thank right, you right. for allowing Professor Dato, Dr. Haj Abdul Murad Ahmad, the SNS GP, PMC, GP, GK, to be a resource person at this time's public lecture at the Faculty of Economic and Business, Universitas Pakuan. Thank you, Dato. Okay. Greetings from Thank our you. team, Mr. Henro Sasonko, who was unable to attend and welcome Dato this time. I'm sorry. Assalamualaikum, teman-teman yeah. dosen dari Universitas Papua. Ya, Bapak-Bapak dan Ibu-Ibu, terima kasih sudah join di acara public lecture kali ini. Dan adik-adik, mahasiswa, Semoga selalu dalam keberkahan. Amin. Amin. Puji dan syukur kehadiran Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala yang sudah berkenan mengizinkan kita semua untuk join dalam Zoom Meet kali ini dalam acara public lecture. Baik keuangan Islam, dewasa ini kan menjadi perbincangan yang meluas dan terkenal baik di negara bermajoriti Muslim maupun non-Muslim. Bahkan in West, Ajaran Islam mengakui adanya perbedaan pendapat dari kekayaan pada setiap orang dengan syarat. Bahwa perbedaan tersebut diakibatkan karena setiap individu mempunyai perbedaan keterampilan, inisiatif, kemampuan fisik, usaha, dan resiko. Namun perbedaan itu tidak diperkenankan melahirkan jurang, kesenjangan yang terlalu jauh antara yang kaya dengan yang miskin. Pemerataan pendistribusian akan menekankan bahwa sumber sumber daya bukan saja karunia dari Allah bagi semua manusia, melainkan juga menjadi amanah Bapak Ibu dan adik-adik semua. Nah, oleh karena itu manusia berkewajiban hanya secara adil dan tidak ada alasan untuk memusatkan sumber daya hanya pada segelintir individu 
dan golongan saja. Uh, hadirin yang terhormat, menarik sekali prinsip ekonomi Islam yang mungkin nanti Datu akan share ke kita semua. Bahwa yang pertama, dunia semesta adalah milik Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala yang diciptakan untuk a whole human being. And then yang kedua, manusia dikreat dari substansi yang sama serta memiliki hak dan kewajiban sebagai khalifah di muka bumi. Sehingga semua sama posisinya di mata Tuhan kita. Dan yang ketiga prinsipnya adalah semua manusia tentu akan dimintai pertanggungjawaban for the responsibility in this world or the next world. Oleh karena itu, mari kita semua mempunyai tugas yang sama sebagai khalifah. Ada pun punya fenomena gitu ya. Ini adalah ketentuan bagi Allah sebagai ujian untuk kita agar senantiasa beriman dan bertakwa kepada Allah Subhanahu wa taala. Nah, oleh karena itu, untuk mengetahui how the development about the Islamic finance yang seharusnya mari kita dengarkan bersama. Terima kasih untuk Dato yang berkenan mengisi uh, pengetahuan, wawasan, and then sharingnya for all of us sebagai uh, satu langkah agar kita bisa mendapatkan suatu ilmu yang bermanfaat bagi kita semua. Oleh karena itu, uh, tidak berlama-lama Dato, Public lecture dengan tema The Development of Islamic Finance Since the Birth of Islam uh, 140 years ago Dengan resmi saya nyatakan dibuka Terima kasih Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Waalaikumsalam Thank you Bu Retno Sama-sama Honorable all the participants The lecturers and of course all invited guests, let's praise our God, Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the creator and sustainer of the universe. Peace be upon our prophet Muhammad Sallallahu, the last messenger of Allah. Semoga kita semua selalu berada dalam kesehatan dan dilindungi Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Amen. Now we will start our session on public lecture. I'm sure we all ever heard about these terms. Sharia economy, Sharia banking, and Islamic banking, Islamic finance. But really, do we understand how these terms become popular within our economy in the last few years? Do we know how the issues emerge and arrive to the recent topics? Perhaps all of you and I have the same questions in our mind. Therefore, in this occasion, we will be shared how the Islamic finance developed along with the birth of Islam. The material will be delivered by our speaker Professor Dato Dr. Haji Abdul Murad. He is the Chief Executive Official from East West International College. Amri, can you sh share the CV of Dato? Okay. Yes, Mrs. Thank you. Professor Emeritus Dato Haji Abdul Murad Ahmad. Dato has a very extensive experiences, not only in his professional practitioner, but also in academic part. We can see from the education background. Next, Amri. We can see from the educational background, Dato received three doctoral programs from three universities and then got the masters from six universities. Dato has also many awards and extensive researches 
and publications. I wonder how Dato study for those programs, Dato. Would you like to share? Must stop. Yes, a moment <laughs> later, probably Dato. Okay. Thank you. Uh, now the for the public lecture session, we will divide into two sessions. First, delivering the material, and second, second the questions. Second. Sesi public lecture ini akan dibagi ke dalam dua sesi. Sesi pertama yaitu pemaparan mengenai materi bagaimana Islam berkembang seiring dengan perkembangan Islam 14.000 tahun yang lalu. Kemudian di sesi yang kedua akan diadakan sesi tanya jawab. Untuk sesi tanya jawab nanti partisipan dapat menuliskan di chat raise hand atau mungkin langsung dengan menyebutkan namanya masing-masing. Perhaps Dato dipersilahkan time is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Terima kasih Bueno dan juga kepada Dr. Ritno yang pernah datang ke Express College ya. Iya, uh, yeah. Dan uh, terima kasih uh, bagi pihak Pakai Universiti lah menjemput saya untuk public lecture ni. Ini kali yang kedua ni. Pertama dulu, couple of years ago pernah datang ke Pakuan tu untuk bagi public lecture juga ya. Iya, yeah, Dan uh, salam saya kepada Dr. Andrew lah ya, yang sama-sama menjemput saya datang uh, berikan uh, public lecture ni. Tak lupa pada sahabat kita lama, Dr. Yuri Faradia. Ya. Sekarang dia di Malaysia ni, di Universiti Terengganu dia. Harap-harap uh, masa depan dia akan join juga saya di sini, di Seremban ni. <laughs> InsyaAllah. Jadi, tadi disebut kenapa banyak sangat saya punya degree atau apa tu. Ada masa kan macam mana? Masa tu kita yang menentukan ya Bu kan? Uh, we have to plan our time, yeah. And uh, uh, I like to study. I don't waste time playing golf. Ah, uh, atau orang Indonesia juga golf. Saya tidak main golf, pak. Uh, main golf tu wasting time. So I spend my time studying. <laughs> so that's why I got a lot of uh, certificate and kind of thing. Yeah. Even today, since I'm CEO of my college. I feel uh, still uh, not enough knowledge, so I'm taking uh, now master in education at Open University of Malaysia. Still studying. Uh, next year, hope will graduate. You see, so you need to continue to study. Then your brain will grow. As my former Prime Minister Dr. Mahathir said, "You don't think your brain die, then we die faster." I said. <laughs> so we need to uh, think every day. Uh, work hard every day. Our brain will grow. Every day our brain grows million. So there will be, uh, we'll be alert. We won't go senile. Eh? So this is very important. And so I'm today 65 years old. I'm still okay. <laughs> Dr. Made, 98 years old, 98 years old. Still want to become the next Prime Minister. <laughs> yeah. yes. So basically, uh, I will share today more Uh, about my background, I start my business 40, 40, 40 years, 45 years ago. Mm. Then I uh, involved in this education and uh, now almost doing education. Boleh dengar? Uh, I'm doing uh, business and also academic two at one time now. So I share my experience during my business time, how I borrow through the conventional bank. And today, even yesterday, I still sign agreement, borrow from uh, Islamic bank. So part of my lecture will be more on the, not only theory, but on the practical part of my life journey for the last 45 years in business. And also now I doing also academic. Yeah? 
So boleh slide nya boleh siapa kalau kita Ibu Slide Ibu ha? Dia share kan? Ah, dia share. Boleh share slide nya Bu yang pertama Okay we will share the slide Yeah. Yeah. Now we go to the slide lah eh? yeah. Yes Thank you Dato for sharing uh, the experience in the academic For me uh, one piece <laughs> for, Yeah one piece enough <laughs> Oke, okay. silahkan Prof. So, thank you very much to all the audience lah, the student, dozen, dan juga participant from from Malaysia, which uh, uh, attending the public lecture today, or maybe in future they will listen it through the YouTube from Pakuan, because some of them are not able to attend today, ya. Yeah? So basically, for I will cover on this uh, development of Islamic finance since the birth of Islam uh, about understanding of Islamic finance concept. There's always a misconception yeah, about what is Islamic finance, what is Islamic banking. Uh, we will talk that in detail. Then the Islamic number two, Islamic finance versus conventional finance. Number three, the development of Islamic finance since uh, Prophet Muhammad time, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then uh, a bit of Islamic finance development in Malaysia. I won't be touching Indonesia because I thought the Indonesian uh, knows better than me down here. And then also the misconception about Islamic finance only for the Muslim, uh, not for non-Muslim. This is another problem that we need to arrest so that this development finance can uh, expand further. And some say that uh, Islamic finance is mimicking or copying just the conventional finance. So these are the few areas that I'm going to cover on my this public lecture, which uh, more on my opinion and my research. Uh, anybody can uh, hope, can share. And I always believe when we do public lecture, is uh, or this kind of discourse, there is two ways. I also learn the public or the audience also learn. I think all the lecturer will, will agree with me. When we do lecturing in the class, not only we lecture the student learn, but lecturer also learn a lot. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Because sometimes lecturer read more the books than the student. <laughs> the student yes. just went for the lecture. <laughs> Very correct. So in this discourse, <laughs> so in this the public lecture or in this course, uh, we always believe that both party is going to be benefit. I will learn from the audience when they ask question or they give me feedback and I'll give my uh, opinion on my views on what is uh, happening for the last uh, 1,400 years on the development of the uh, Islamic finance. Okay, well, next lecture. Sorry, next slide. Next slide, Amri. Ah, next slide. Amri, slide selanjutnya, Amri. Next slide, the history of climate finance. I, I no need to show the slide, is it? Okay. Amri? The, the second slide. Amri? Sorry? Okay, dia panggil stop dia. Ah, okay, okay. No problem, Bu. Sementara itu... Yes. Ah, I will just go through lah. No problem. So, the history of Islamic finance. So, in principle, uh, Islamic finance, in principle, since the birth of Islam, yeah, uh, in principle, since the birth of Islam, the main belief is that we have the five pillars. Yeah? The testimony of faith, five pillars, prayers, zakat, yeah. and fasting Ramadan, it's and all home, home. Home. So, in these medieval times, yeah, with until the prominence of Florentine banking, the interest-based lending is the general prudent principle. Under Islamic law, under Islamic law, we shared among the Muslim and the European that. So those 
time during the birth of Islam, the interest uh, based lending is the main uh, issue which oppress a lot of people and the business down there during that time. So that's why, that's why during the birth of Islam, one of the things that the revelation uh, by Allah SWT is how we should manage the business, not to oppress the other parties during the, uh, during the business transaction or during the commercial transaction. So as the difference increase, the final transaction become more complicated. And uh, in 1963, then only the first banking set up in Egypt. So before this, during 1,400 years ago, most of the business activity are localized, are more domestic. That means in the certain area only. So there's no proper structure of banking or rulings or regulation that is in place. So that's why doesn't mean that people said that now we said the Islamic banking or the first Islamic bank in Egypt, 1963, we Islam only start knows about financing start in the 1963 or in the 19th century, which is totally wrong principle. So that's why I like to say here that the bank or the financial system in Islamic is started 1,400 years ago. It's not 1963 or the 19th century. So we, we are not copying the conventional banking system. Actually, we already start our Islamic finance system during the birth of Islam. So this is what is my topic here about saying that we in the uh, Islam has already started our financial system during the uh, Prophet Muhammad time. So this is a lot of wrong uh, ideas that people said that we are copying the conventional banking. The conventional banking start later. It's 1947 when they start the commercial, uh, what we call it conventional banking. Yeah? So since then, the modern Islamic finance has grown terminally since 1963, where the proper uh, financial system set up. That is where the first bank set up in Egypt. So there is a, really a structure on the financial system in the Islamic world. So since then, as I mentioned there, the development is uh, faster. So we'll go for the next slide. The next slide will be more on the background of the Islamic area compliance transaction, which I will go through during the other slide. So we just skip this slide, we go for the next slide. The principle of Islamic finance, yeah, the next slide. What is Islamic finance? So the next slide, yeah. What is Islamic finance? Islamic finance is start financing that complies with the tenets of the religion. So it's not man-made, but it is uh, Allah-made. Yeah? It's a rebellion. It's not by human being on the Islamic finance. So the main tenets in the Islamic finance is that they should not be riba. No interest element. Uh, this is clearly stated in the Surah Al-Baqarah uh, verses uh, 271. Yeah? And then there's number two, no gara. There no, should be no uncertainty. Anything that you must buy must be certain. If the product is not in existence yet, we cannot do the transaction. So I think I don't have to go detail, but it's in general. Then number three is maisa, gambling. There should be no gambling element yeah, in any of the Islamic financing. And of course, the last one is non-halal activities such as drug, alcohol, tobacco, and all these kind of things. So these are the four main tenets or main uh, injunction that in Islamic canon. If we will go through all through the seminar or this lecture, this goes all around these four tenets in the Islamic canon. It does not go outside of the, out of these four 
uh, tenets of the Islam, which is uh, revealed in the Al Quran. Then we go to the next slide. The sources of law. Next slide, yeah. Yes. So Islam is a religion based on system of principle and uh, rules designed to achieve the betterment of humankind. That is what the basic uh, system or the basic principle that is revealed by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. The source of law in Islam uh, is seen as divine, as was revealed by Allah. As mentioned earlier, it's not man-made. And also by Prophet Muhammad through the revelation of Allah through him. It is from the source that a whole Islamic legal system evolved and developed. So the Islamic legal system that we have today is all the injunction that we get from the Al-Quran or from the revelation by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Islam is a religion based on system of principle and rule designed to achieve betterment of humankind. Whatever the system that is come out of the Al-Quran by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is for the betterment of humankind. As uh, Bu Redno saying just now, as Khalifa, we have the duty for the betterment of humankind and to be fair to all the humankind. So this is part of our rules, our, our jobs as a Khalifa. Then Islam has combined these two elements in two divine sources of namely Al-Quran and the Prophet uh, Muhammad saying or Hadith. So both of these elements or resources are from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Either direct to the revelation by the Jibrail or through uh, other means through Prophet Muhammad saying that is all part of the revelation by God that we are by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us for, to, to come up with these two legal system. So next uh, slide. The Quran. Okay, the source of law is basically from Al-Quran and Hadith. So the tradition of Prophet Muhammad are record of all the saying, and all these are the approval from the uh, Prophet Muhammad saying that we use in the today's legal system. These two divine sources are important as they provide not only the parameters of what is approved and what is not but also specific injunction for specific case in life. So, in summary, the two sources of law in the Islamic uh, system, legal system, is through the Hadith and also the Al-Quran. So, next slide, please. Combine sources of law. The primary sources of law in Islam are based on revelation, that is revelation of Allah SWT, and the secondary sources of law. So we have two, now we come to the next step, we have two sources of law in our legal system. First part, as I said, is now from the revelation and from the hadith. Both are also revelation of Allah SWT. So now we have another secondary source of legal system in Islam that is on, based on human interpretation and reasoning. So this is very important and to, to understand there are two sources of law in our legal system that will come to the analogy how the commercial law is being developed until today. So it's good to understand that 1,400 years ago, whatever revealed during a time is, is can be used until present because the God says, Prophet Rahman is the last prophet there's no more prophet. That means there's no more laws or no more revelation for Allah Subhanahu Taala for us to uh, use or for us to implement. What we can do is from the secondary source of law that the human will interpret from the first primary source of law in our legal or commercial system. Next slide. This is uh, a Surat Maidah. Uh, Verses 3, the last sermon of Prophet Muhammad, as I said just now, uh, that there's no more prophet after this. And he said that this day I have perfected your religion for you, completed 
my favor upon you and have chosen Islam as your way of life. That is the last sermon during the Haji Wada, which after that, the Prophet Muhammad wafat. So since then, we have to use whatever in the uh, primary source of law, Quran and Hadith, for us to interpret, for us to use until the current present day. Next slide. Sources and uh, principle of Islamic finance. Uh, now, the second part of my lecture is more towards we are talking uh, or what we are discussing today on the Islamic finance uh, topic. So the four main sources of Islamic law uh, uh, from the Holy Quran and then from the Prophet Muhammad Hadith, Sunnah, and then the secondary law which from the chaos analogy and uh, to the ijihad ulama, ulama on the secondary part of the Islamic law. And then from this Islamic law, we call it Sharia law, from the analogy of this Sharia law by the human being through the chaos and ijma, so they come up with this Islamic faith or Islamic law which is distinguished from the Sharia law. Sharia law is the main body, whereas uh, uh, Islamic law or faith is part and parcel of the Sharia law. So faith is distinguished by the fact that the letter is by Allah. That means the Sharia law is basically from Allah revelation. Yeah? And whereas faith is by human interpretation. That is through the Yes, analogy and the uh, ijtihad. Huh? So this to understand, this is two uh, sources of law that we are implementing, that we are adopting in our Islamic finance. So next slide, please. So uh, the process of deriving Islamic law. So the first level, we have, we can get only about 350 of the verses in Quran, which are legally oriented that we can use. And the balance is from through the Sunnah of uh, uh, Nabi Muhammad and the Hadith from uh, of Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Level two is the man-made exception. The second source of law just now, I mentioned. Second source of Islamic law through ijtihad uh, by the Islamic scholars. And also from that, they come up with the law in usul fiqh. That means the fiqh law. After they have uh, have the jihad, they have already agreed on the uh, on the whatever from the analogy from the primary source of law. Then they come up with the usul fiqh or the fiqh law. Level three, all the derived legal rules are collected in books of fiqh or treaties. Yeah, and then this uh, this third level we have. These four masab or Sunni school, Hanafi, Shafi, Maliki, and Hanbali, yeah? and each of their own usul fiqh and their own books fiqh, each school of thought is considered independently correct. Yeah? Even uh, they have a slight uh, uh, difference, but in the end, they are uh, coming to the same conclusion of the law. Next slide. Next slide is just to highlight, as I said, 1,400 years ago, where interest bearing is the main transaction of the business of the day, which oppress the people in doing business, where there is unfair, unfairness in dealings of kind of things, especially in the interest uh, element. So this uh, Quran is a major part, major, major part, the verses uh, Al-Baqarah 274, to eight one, uh, emphasizing regarding the interest element which not to be in any way in the commercial transaction. So this is very important uh, in the Islamic commercial law. So this is where we can see later on in my lecture the interest element is will be the one we're going to highlight more. Yeah? 
So the next uh, slide, please. Structuring Sharia compliant transaction. So several elements make the structure Sharia compliant. Yeah? Compli compliant yeah? So judgment of what to are, what super very broad. So we now come to, this, to focus on the Islamic finance. So when Islamic finance now, how they develop the product? How they going to uh, implement the Islamic finance? So they have this Sharia Supervisory, Supervisory Board, SSB, yeah? uh, which normally uh, minimum of three Islamic juries or more yeah? will go into all detail of the product, Islamic product that they're going to uh, sell. And they the one who are going to verify whether it's uh, halal or not halal or can be uh, implemented or not. Yeah? Then after that, we have another level. We call it standardization. Requires from the Islamic Financial Services Board. This is uh, in a Malaysian context. In uh, in based in uh, Bahrain, they call it AAOFI or the Accounting and Auditing Organization for Islamic Financial Institution. So the first level is the Islamic Finance is the Sharia Board, which uh, the one will decide what kind of product that can be implemented with their fatwas. Yeah? In Malaysia, we have that Sharia board. I think in Indonesia, so they have the same thing. Yes. And then the, within that, they have another body, which is the Islamic Financial Service Board, which is the one auditing. Their job is to auditing that whatever the Sharia board already approved for the implementation, their job is now to audit to make that the product that we're going to implement is compliant to the Sharia principle. So investor, uh, investor decide if they are comfortable with it. So it's their uh, personal choice. Yeah? Uh, whether they're going to use the Islamic finance or the conventional finance. Despite, yeah, despite arguments against Islamic finance are merely, merely being a form of a substance. Yeah? Uh, many investors see Islamic financial product as more compliant than the present practice or the lesser of two evils. What I'm trying to see here, uh, people say that the Islamic banking or the Islamic finance product are just copying or mimicking the conventional banking product. So it's almost the same, they say. So what is the uh, just matter of uh, form? It's not really the substance. So my comment is that initially, yes, when the Islamic banking, for example, I take the example in Malaysia, when they start the Islamic banking, they are, they are doing the similar product what the commercial banking is doing, but in a Sharia compliant way. So to those people, they said, oh, they're just copying the uh, conventional banking system. So that was during the early days of the development of the bank, Islamic finance, Islamic banking in Malaysia. So we can see that that is the situation. But as it goes by today, it's already about, we start in 1983. Now it's almost more than 20 years. So there are more, uh, Islamic for compliant product which are not similar to the conventional product. So at that time, yeah, you can use. You still you think that the conventional bank is better or than the Islamic bank, then you can use it. But you can choose between the two evils, uh, whatever you want. But especially if you follow the Islamic compliant, then we are more safe on our uh, transaction. Next slide. Islamic finance principle consists of four basic tenets. Yeah. So if something is immoral in Islamic finance, what the Sharia board will look into, into these four basic tenets. The Sharia board will go to these four tenets before they make their decision whether the product can be implemented or can be used or not. Number one, if something is immoral, one cannot profit from it. So anything, this kind of situation, 
you can for example you want to open a night club so the islamic finance cannot borrow your money to open a night club then number two to share reward one must share the risk again here is the main basic thing there should be no risk element you want to do business you must share the risk so islamic banking they are partners with the with the business people they are not lender borrower where is the conventional bank they are lender borrower they charge on interest they are making money on interest they never lose they only make money for the conventional bank whereas in the islamic bank they have to share the reward and share the risk so there is no risk element again it's a very important part of the islamic finance number three one cannot sell what does not own so there's no speculation you can't speculate business in in islamic finance there's no speculation of business you buy want to buy something that's not produced yet you can't buy it unless you really have you have you have the detail of the product that you want to 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 buy in future number four in any transaction one must clearly stipulate what he or she is buying or selling again here there must be certainty in islamic banking islamic finance system everything needs to be certain you can't buy for example uh, uh, a calf inside the womb of the sheep which is not uh, born yet there's no certainty whether there is going to be born or whether it's male or female this is what we call it uh, certainty yeah so these are four basic thing normally the sharia board will look into before they make the fatwa or they make the decision that the bank can sell or uh, i mean can sell the product to the consumer so next slide so that is a basic thing on what is happening in the islamic financial system and here we can see the development of the financial system since 1963 you can see the red part was uh, in egypt when the first bank set up yeah now is expand uh, vastly and the potential of growth of the islamic finance system if more people like people like in malaysia indonesia will uh, promote this kind of uh, financing because we are the muslim country we should be the first one uh, using the islamic financial system then i think we can easily uh, promote to other part of the country uh, part of the world because population malaysia indonesia is very huge over 200 million uh, muslim population whereas those population in the islamic country in the middle east there is not as big as us so if we malaysia indonesia as what we do today we have this public seminar to educate the people um, more on this islamic financial system and more our population will use it and we may be in future one of the main center of islamic finance in the world and we easily can promote it to other part of the world okay next slide okay the development of islamic finance industry has fueled by pioneering institution industry being building organization organization this is all over the world lah in the middle east and also in uh, asia so insef i just pointed insef here insef is a uh, university owned by the central bank of malaysia which produce specifically human development in islamic finance all their subject is on islamic finance and is based in kuala lumpur and the student come all over the world including indonesia yeah and all the other countries whether muslim or no muslim countries they are now study in insef there is a, a university islamic uh, bank university owned by the malaysian government through the central bank and their subject are all uh, in islamic finance because they are producing uh, specific for human resources in the islamic finance uh, industry all banks in malaysia will send their uh, staff human resources to come to study at this uh, insef for their uh, continuous uh, professional development yeah they have short courses they have uh, uh, degree 
they have masters, they also have PhD, but specific on Islamic financing. So this is what Malaysian government is doing now, try to be a leader in the reaching of uh, human resource capital, not only for Malaysia, but through the whole world, through this INCIF, eh? INCIF eh? is a uh, uh, is the university Islamic uh, bank university uh, Islamic financial university in Malaysia? The rest are all the body now uh, involved in the Islamic activity. For example, like AAOFI is the auditing uh, standard using in uh, Bahrain, and the rest all other part of the uh, world. Uh, yeah. The next uh, slide. Yeah, with the last part of my lecture is the modern Islamic financial institution, or we call it IFS. Yeah, Islamic financial institution is different from normally we say Islamic bank. It's always a misinterpretation. When some people say Islamic financial institution, they're talking Islamic bank. Islamic bank is only part of the Islamic financial institution. So Islamic bank, yes. The first Islamic bank set up in 1963 in Egypt. But Islamic financial institution or Islamic finance has been practiced since Prophet Muhammad time. Yeah? So we need to have to this clear distinction so that uh, we have to say that we are not copying the conventional banking. We are not mimicking the commercial banking. Actually, we already done the financial banking or the financial Section 1400 years ago. Yeah? So, the next slide is the geography development of the Islamic finance uh, uh, happening in the uh, Islamic world. For example, uh, the early development of Islamic finance will focus on the welfare and benefit of Muslims in their own domestic location. As I said just now, 1400 years ago. When the Islamic finance is more localized, yeah, localized for the domestic domestic finance uh, needs of the local people, because there are not more not much of transaction between one country and another country. Then only in uh, the next uh, level, the mid government saving bank in Egypt, yeah, was founded in 1963. The proper structure of banking in Islam, Islamic world. This only started in 1963 uh, in Egypt. And then follow the Dubai Islamic Bank, which is the first commercial bank established in Islamic finance operation. The first one uh, in Egypt is a saving bank, not really a commercial bank. Yeah? Then only the first Islamic bank was set up in Dubai. And in Malaysia, the first uh, kind of uh, Islamic uh, setup was in 1963. They call it Tabung Haji. Yeah, Tabung Haji, where the Muslim people will contribute their saving into this uh, Tabung Haji for them to uh, go to pilgrimage, to go to Mekah untuk menunaikan haji. Yeah? Uh, but then when the, there's so much money uh, was, uh, was uh, collected, they're using also the money for uh, economic activities of the people in uh, Malaysia. Then only the first Islamic bank in Malaysia was set up in 1983. And currently we have about 24 Islamic banks in Malaysia. So here we want to reiterate that the banking system, yes, is new. The banking structure of the Islamic system. But it's not the Islamic finance. Islamic finance is already there 1,400 years ago. When the revelation in the Quran is already uh, tell us how we should uh, do our business or how the business should be transacted, transacted according to our uh, Sharia law, which will be uh, not oppressing uh, other people in their transaction. Okay, so the next one factors influencing the development of financial solution. Okay. What, what is the factors suddenly uh, come up with this, uh, the bank can be set up? So one of the main factors is the oil boom in 1970, where most of the Muslim country in the Middle East have extra money, extra cash from the sales of the oil. 
So now they thinking a proper way of helping other countries using the uh, boom or using the all boom web. How to uh, uh, lend the money to other countries, other Muslim country for their development. So that's where the bank, uh, Dubai Islamic Bank was set up. So the single banking system is a scheme that adopt an exclusive approach for Islamic finance from legislative point of view. Then the dual banking system allows for the coexistence. So in Malaysia, we have two types. One is single banking system, Islamic banking system. And then we have the dual banking system. That means the conventional bank also given a license to operate a Islamic bank. So this is what happening in Malaysia. So, so that allows conventional financial institution to offer Islamic. So that it allows yeah, the conventional bank which been operating to also uh, offer the Islamic financial uh, banking system. So this is how the current uh, banking system, uh, Islamic banking system operation in Malaysia. So the next slide. Uh, a summary of major factors in the development of uh, uh, Islamic financial system. Uh, so Islamic, Islamic, Islamic common ideas stipulated the need for Islamic economic institution to address the social welfare and religious obligation of Muslim in a financial matter for both individual and corporation. For example, as we see just now uh, during the oil boom area. Uh, in the Middle East, they set up this uh, bank. Then they set up from this bank, they call it Islamic Development Bank. So they use the money through the Islamic Development Bank to help other uh, Islam or Muslim country to develop. For example, Islamic Development Bank uh, give a lot of uh, finance to Malaysian government and also to Indonesian government for their economic activities. Yeah? This is the cross-border and international effort by the OIC. This is part of OIC, the Overseas Islamic Countries, uh, setting the Islamic Development Bank is to help development of other uh, Muslim countries. This is become through the uh, impact of the oil boom. We have a lot of extra cash to help the other countries. So the implementation of Sharia principle to govern Islamic financial activities resulting in the establishment of single and dual Islamic banking system with single or dual legislation. So in Malaysia, uh, we see that uh, either there are single bank, uh, single Islamic bank, or their bank, we have a dual system. One is conventional and uh, uh, Islamic uh, system. So we can see the phases of uh, development of the Islamic financial system, uh, 1970, where the first uh, bank set up in uh, Egypt. And then during the oil boom time, uh, this is where more banks are set up. And then in 1990 only, we can see the corporate governance in the banking and uh, development of more innovative uh, uh, Islamic financial product since 1990s uh, until the, today. So there is a there's a next slide, please. Next slide. Next slide which shows that this is where I'm um, I'm seeing is now uh, the, the phase of development. Yeah? We start in 1970, uh, 1990 only. We have this uh, Sharia board. We have this uh, auditing uh, body to check and balance on the. Islamic product. The so next slide. Islamic financial system features and uh, component. So the development of a proper standard setting process is a crucial factor in the development of in, is Islamic financial institution. So this is where the Sharia board come to the picture, the auditing standard board come into the picture. So the development financial system must have financial regulatory bodies and legislate. And in Malaysia, it's all uh, legislated by through the 
Central Bank of Malaysia on this uh, banking system. All the Islamic bank is uh, to set up, they must have approval from the Central Bank or Bank Negara Malaysia, where they state all the regulatory to be followed for them to set up the Islamic finance or Islamic bank. Then govern and regulate the industry to ensure the sound and stable system through effective supervision, disclosure, transparency, and market display. So in Malaysia, this all be done through the central bank. Yeah? Next uh, slide. The unique features of Islamic financial system. So the purpose of IFS is to mobilize global and regional resources to promote and sustain development while fulfilling the goal of Sharia. So like this Islamic bank, the Islamic development bank. So their purpose is to mobilize all the excess funds which they have in the Middle East uh, to help other countries for their development, especially the Muslim countries. The distinguishing factors, features of IFS are risk sharing. So again, there's no interest element. Whatever the money loaned by this uh, Islamic development bank, there's no uh, interest element is more on risk sharing. Equitable distribution that is on profit sharing and based on the Shara board compliance. So internal Shara control system. And also in the end, there will be a corporate social responsibility and zakat payment obligation. At the end of the day, whatever project through the Islamic Development Bank uh, participate, there must be a benefit to the people. There is the corporate social responsibility. And of course, if there's a profit, there is zakat to be paid through the uh, ventures. Next slide. So the unique features of Islamic financial system. Yeah. So number one, regulation, supervision, and governance. So this is uh, very important through the Sharia Compliance Board. Number two, the financial product and services, yeah, the underlying underlying contract of this product and services must not include any prohibited element such as interest, uh, uncertainty, gara, gara, gambling, and uh, so forth. Number three, financial financing of real economic activities. So in the Islamic finance, the financing will be only in the actual real economic activity. They know they cannot be uh, financing on speculation or uncertainty. So this is one of the unique features in Islamic uh, system. Number four, resharing. As I said just now, how the Islamic Development Bank, when they do the project in other country, they will take the risk together. So they don't just lending and uh, charge interest for them. So if there's a project is failed, they will lose also. Yeah? So these are unique in the Islamic financial system, which you would get it in the conventional banking system. So next slide, the Islamic uh, financial system. So there are two, two parts. One is indirect financing. The other one is uh, direct financing. Uh, I go to the next slide because you have the detail in the next slide. What is uh, indirect financing? So indirect financing is like what the bank, Islamic bank now is giving out through the profit sharing, Darba, joint venture, Musharaka, yeah? and all the product, that the loan that they're given. Lah. So this is called indirect financing system. Then there's another part of the Islamic bank is the direct financing. Direct financing now more like for big uh, loans. For example, currently Malaysian government want to borrow 50 billion for the development of the country and also to fight the COVID-19. So they use the Islamic finance by issuing the Sukuk bond, S-U-K-U-K, -K, yeah, Sukuk bond. In uh, conventional, they call it bond, but in Islam, they call it Sukuk bond. So the government borrow the money from the public through this Islamic banking system by issuing the Sukuk bond. It's the same like the conventional bond, yeah? but that's here. There's no interest element. So that is with uh, direct financing in the Islamic financial system. Next slide. 
So next slide. Yeah. So here, just a table which shows from uh, 2008 until 2015. So the overall development of the financial system in Malaysia is about 20% a year. So that means there's a tremendous growth of uh, Islamic financial system in Malaysia, average of about 20% a year. Next slide. Next slide, just show that uh, in by sources from Bank Negara Malaysia, the amount of uh, financing system, the growth of uh, loans uh, in the Malaysian system is uh, growth very rapidly. So due to this growth rapidly, so there's a very good potential of Islamic financial system participating in the future growth of the Malaysia uh, development. So in conclusion, uh, for my lecture today, yeah, uh, last one. So Islamic finance was developed since the birth of Islam 1,400 years ago. So I'd like to again uh, reiterate that Islamic finance is not born when the Islamic banking first born. Islamic finance is already there 1,400 years ago. People thought that, or people say that we in the Islamic uh, finance system only start when the first Islamic bank set up in Egypt. This is totally wrong concept. We need to educate the people. Number two, the development of the modern Islamic finance has been ongoing since 1940s, but the first bank was set up in Egypt, 1963. Third, initially, most of the product developed were Sharia compliant products that have been restructured from conventional bank. Yeah, because we set up the Islamic banking system later, yeah, whereas the conventional banking is already in place. So when the first Islamic banking system started, they start to copy. They start to copy what the conventional banking system has been offering their product. So when they copy, so they make it into a Sharia compliant product. So people said that, well, actually Islamic banking is just copy the conventional banking product, which at that time is true. But now after 20 years or more, 30 years, we know the Islamic banking product are much more varieties, are much more uh, better than those uh, conventional banking product. So this uh, concept that we just copy or mimicking the conventional bank should be erased in our mind and we should have to educate the people. And for me, for example, I already in business for 45 years. I've been borrowing money from the banks for my business through a conventional system. It's very difficult for me. Yesterday, I went to a bank which I borrow again for my business using the Islamic banking system. Even the officers still use the terminology used in the conventional banking system. For example, they said, this one, uh, you have to sign it as an agent to the bank. I said, no, in Islamic banking system, we don't call agent, we call it wakala. Oh, Datuk, no wakala. I said, yeah, because I'm teaching uh, Islamic banking system uh, in my college. Well, they said, most of the people who come to the bank, they don't understand the terminology of even the Islamic banking system. This is another problem that we need to educate. So like the INSEF, the, the, the university, university in Malaysia, yeah, uh, which provide the human resources, they are now trying to, as much as possible, to, to make sure the terminology of the Islamic banking system is properly used. Otherwise, I went to yesterday to sign an agreement as though that I went to send another conventional bank to send an agreement because the officer I use all the terminology in the conventional bank. Yeah. So this is the and the challenges of us today for Malaysia and Indonesia. We have to look forward how we can really develop this financial uh, Islamic financial system according to our mold. What we need in the Islamic way, not to use half us and half through the 
conventional system. Lastly, Islamic finance help to meet the needs of deficit unit in society, either direct or indirect financing, as I see it now. Yeah, his, his role is like the commercial bank. Uh, it helps in the development of the commerce. It development, it develop, development of the government uh, requirements of fund of kind of thing. So they play the same role like the commercial bank, but they have their own tenants, which we have already mentioned earlier. There should be no interest in the main element and rest the other thing which is illegal. They cannot participate. Yeah. So in summary, what I'm going to highlight here is gain that we have to work together, especially the Muslim country. Is this subject even is uh, very new, even in the Malaysian education okay. system. Only for the last two or three years that we have to now compulsory teach students on Islamic finance and banking. For example, in my college, it started last three years where the government um, uh, enforced that all colleges and universities in Malaysia must have this Islamic banking system subject uh, compulsory teaching in the, in the uh, colleges and university. So you just imagine, even in our school system in Malaysia here, they have not really teach uh, Islamic banking and finance. So how do you expect that we can grow very fast to overcome or to compete with the commercial bank? At our level now, when they come to the college, only they started to know a bit about Islamic financial system. During school days, they don't have it all. I don't know about Indonesia, but this is the problem now in Malaysia. And this way, the, the, the problem of the Islamic banking system in Malaysia, they really cannot move forward because there's a lot of terminology, there's a lot of uh, views. People seem that they are almost like the commercial bank, not really uh, a bank, uh, Islamic bank on their own. Especially in Malaysia, with uh, the government issuing license to the commercial bank, can set uh, also Islamic bank. And again, it's so confused the market. One bank, two system. You go to one bank, you have two system. Uh, so these are the things that a uh, lot of work need to be done. And uh, that's why I choose this subject because it's a very difficult subject to, to, to get it across to the, everybody to understand. And people tend now lacking going back to the old system. If we don't really promote the uh, Islamic system to the public and to make the people understand, especially uh, which I think we have to suggest to the Malaysian government, the subject of Islamic finance system, Islamic finance institution should be even teach and start from the primary or even start at the secondary school. Now, fine enough, fine enough, they start to start, uh, force us to teach in the college and uh, university level. So, uh, Ibu Reno and uh, Dr. Reno and the rest, uh, I've spoken more than one hour, a little bit tired. <laughs> so I look for question answer that I can share together. I apologize if I cannot answer. We'll give it later. Lah. Yeah? Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Dato. It's a very fruitful perspective from Dato. Uh, actually, uh, we have this uh, the common uh, problems here in Indonesia. Uh, in Indonesia also, uh, when I heard about your uh, explanation about the history, uh, the development of uh, Islamic banking, I think in Indonesia have a almost similar uh, problem uh, that though. Uh, previously Indonesia, uh, in a conventional banking, we have also a license for Islamic banking. And also, yes, the problem of terminology is always uh, a challenging uh, theme here. Uh, but, in, in, but in Indonesia, in the recently, we, uh, we have uh, a quite a significant movement. Uh, there is a, a step uh, taken by the government that uh, the government combined four uh, Islamic bankings uh, into one uh, bank, uh, Islamic bankings, uh, which is uh, Bank Syariah Indonesia. I hope uh, this will give uh, like a uh, uh, future hope.
anything will uh, develop uh, as we expect. Uh, Dato, perhaps uh, I would like, uh, I'm, I'm curious uh, that from your perspective, Dato, uh, the main benefit of uh, Islamic finance compared to conventional finance, uh, how we can uh, promote this concept to others that we do have uh, a, a very uh, good uh, concept here because as we know uh, the Islamic banking, Islamic finance is developed uh, in a country which uh, a majority is Islam and a Muslim uh, community. So how we can promote it uh, to other country which uh, where uh, people still, uh, most of Muslim still the minority that uh, Promote concept. Promote concept no. Concept uh, Islamic banking. Macam mana? Yeah. Macam mana nak promote concept Islamic banking? Well, uh, thank you very much, Bu. Uh, that's why in Malaysia now they have this uh, university. Yeah, university we call it INSEF. INSEF, which now focus on uh, development of human resources. Yeah. I mean, producing human resources specific for uh, specific for Islamic finance uh, needs. So in Malaysia, I can see this helps now the government uh, by promoting this uh, university. Uh, those people who are graduated from this university, whether they are bachelor, masters, or PhD, they now are working in the financing institution whether conventional or non-conventional, they are the one now who are really like the, 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 the speaker or the mouthpiece for the Malaysian government to promote more on this uh, Islamic finance. That is in Malaysia. Oh, okay. Uh, probably we uh, go on to uh, the next uh, session. Uh, we can open the uh, session of questions and answers, uh, probably for the participants, all the participants, uh, you may uh, chat for the questions. It's okay if uh, the questions in Bahasa ya, Dato, ya? Boleh, boleh, boleh. Yeah. Probably uh, three questions first. Or you may raise the hands. Meanwhile, uh, for waiting uh, the uh, uh, questions from the participants, uh, Dato, I'm curious about uh, the Garar, uh, because uh, in Garar there is a concept of uh, uncertainty, yes, Dato, yeah. Yes. yes. How this concept, uh, yes. How this concept uh, will intertwine with the concept, uh, the time value of money, Dato. Tak dengar. I can. can... Sorry. Oh, sorry. Can I hear? Can I repeat it? The question again. The question again. Okay. Uh, how uh, uh, the concept of uncertainty uh, intertwine with the concept uh, time value of money data? It concept of uncertainty. Yes, with the uh -huh. concept of time value of money. Okay. Yeah. Time value money. Yeah, yeah, time value money. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, in the Islamic system. Uh, they don't consider, consider time value money. They, they're talking about present. Whatever you want to do must be uh, present. The thing must be there. You cannot oh. be buying uh, things which is not there. It's not in uh, existed. For example, just now. For example, you want to buy a cow. Inside the cow, there's a calf. So yeah. they cannot uh, say that I will sell you the cow with a calf. Cannot. Because the calf is not certain yet uh, to be born or whether it's male or female in the, in the mother womb. So this is what the, the concept of uncertainty in the Islamic 
concept. You can't buy things for those not in existence yet. For example, last time in our village, you have a durian tree. You have a durian tree. So yeah. there are people say, okay, I buy the durian uh, fruits when they start fruiting for 10,000, uh, 1 million rupiah, for example. But the durian is not fruiting yet. So you can't buy the durian tree fruits if the free is not there. This is what they say, uncertainty. The thing not certain, you cannot buy. So does not affect the time value of money. You're going to talking about certainty of the product. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's okay. what I, I told sorry, you. Sorry, sorry. Now I didn't explain much. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Dato. I think uh, there is a question uh, coming to the chat. Uh, uh, okay. Kindly, uh, from uh, Bufara, kindly uh, share correct practice of this SMA in Malaysia relate to Islamic finance, Islamic financing trend. Okay. It's very uh, interesting. Sorry, it's not, not, not correct, but it's the current practice that uh, uh, the current uh, practice. I would like to know what is the current practice of uh, SME uh, in uh, in utilizing this uh, Islamic finance. Thank you, Dr. Thank, Thank, you, Dr. Dr. Thank you, Dr. Mora. Very interesting. Okay. It's SME as though, like in Indonesia, the main bulk in business in Malaysia, or 80% are SME, okay? They are small, medium enterprise. So they are not very familiar using this uh, Islamic finance product, especially they are very familiar using the conventional product. So what happened today? So what happened today, the Bank Nagara or the Central Bank Malaysia today provide cheap funds for the SME. For example, I said to you just now, I borrowed yesterday money from a bank, from an SME bank, which is loan the money come from the central bank. The government provide the money. So they give very cheap interest. For example, they don't call it interest because uh, it's uh, Islamic making, so they call it profit, only at 3.5% which is normal if you go to the bank, they will charge you 8 to 9% interest to the conventional bank. So because of this nation government now educating the SME to borrow more money through the Islamic financing system, which they are providing, now people like us, we are now open to borrow from the government because of the rate of uh, uh, is very cheap. So this is how now in Malaysia the SME, uh, 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 the government are educating the SME to borrow the money from the uh, for uh, borrow the money for the Islamic financial system. Okay. Um, Boleh. Boleh paham? Boleh. Thank you, Dato. Thank you, Dato. <laughs> okay. Other questions? I think for uh, the li attendant list will be shared after uh, we at the end of this session. Uh, include uh, the material, yeah, that uh, can we share to uh, all participants? That okay. okay, thank you. We're not. Yes. May I ask? Okay. Uh, silakan. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam. Uh, just a simple question that uh, I believe that to develop uh, Islamic financing system in a country, uh, we have uh, to make the community have a good and deep understanding about the system. So to what extent in Malaysia, uh, if, if you can uh, tell us, uh, what is the role of the government and also the, the financial institution, such as uh, banking, to uh, develop the, or to attract the community and giving uh, such kind of uh, deep uh, understanding about the benefits of this system. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pa. Uh, again, I, there are two, uh, way. One, I mentioned earlier, the Malaysian government itself set a funds. Mm. So they 
provide the funds for the Islamic uh, financing system through the central bank. Yeah, through the central bank. Mm. So the, the 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 government become bank now. <laughs> the government is a banker now. <laughs> to help promote Islamic banking, the government become banker now. It is not their job actually. So they provide, for example, now eight billion ringgit. They give to central bank. They said central bank, this fund is for uh, Islamic financing system. You use this fund and uh, give loans to the public using the Islamic financing system. Of course, the central bank is not a bank. They again using the commercial bank to help to, to give the loans to the public. Huh? So that's one way. That means the government now become uh, a main uh, promoter for this uh, Islamic finance by providing funds. Basically, the government won't provide funds for, for the economic activity. The job is the bank, right? But to help to promote the Islamic finance, they now coming up with their own money to give loans to the Islamic financing uh, people who want to borrow through the Islamic finance system. Then for the bank, as I said just now, there are two types of bank in Malaysia. One is really conventional, and they have also Islamic window. They, they're running dual. Dual, eh? they have the conventional, they have the Islamic financial uh, system. This sometimes confuse people. Confuse people. You go to the bank, they say you want the financing Islam or you want the conventional. And they start talking the kind of thing. So it's very difficult for that kind of bank to promote the Islamic finance, as I said. But there's another, now the government give license just for Islamic banking system. And that bank now is helping to develop, to educate the people more and I can see there is much better prospect for them to educate the people on Islamic finance. So there are three ways currently running parallel in the educating the people using the Islamic financing system. Okay, thank you. Welcome. Thank you, uh, Pak Ari. Thank you, Dato. Uh, any other questions from the participants? Okay. Uh, ibu, uh, assalamualaikum ibu. Uh, kalau 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 dibenarkan sebab ini mungkin uh, terkeluar sikit uh, daripada datuk punya topik. Tetapi minat saya begini, tiap-tiap uh, tahun berbilion uh, uh, apa ni uh, ringgit dikeluarkan oleh pekerja-pekerja asing termasuk orang Indonesia ya. Uh, dari Malaysia. Tak salah saya tahun uh, 2019 17 bilion ringgit ya. Jadi mungkin uh, Datuk ada pandangan bagaimana kita boleh gunakan wang itu uh, untuk uh, kemakmuran uh, uh, umat ya. Kerana dihantar ke Indonesia, dia pergi terus kepada keluarga dan sebagainya. Dan pekerja di Indonesia yang majoriti hantar keluar banyak uh, wang tersebut. Mungkin kita boleh fikirkan bersama. Uh, Datuk uh, Murad mungkin ada idea yang yang uh, boleh di, di, uh, dimajukan kepada kedua kerajaan uh, Malaysia dan Indonesia. Terima kasih uh, Datuk dan uh, Ibu. Terima kasih. Yeah. Terima kasih Tan Sri Anwar, former our president Open University of Malaysia and UC Kebangsaan. Very senior. Ni my cikgu lah, my teacher lah. <laughs> so, so, the first uh, the first step is that the uh, the money itu about 17 20 billion ringgit a year lah. They they uh, repatriate back to the so the problem at the moment, these people who come to Malaysia, they are poor people. Eh? They are TKI, Tenaga Kerja Indonesia, kan? yang begitu. So they come here to earn the money. So they need the money to give back to the people in the villages or kind of thing. If not, they won't be coming down here, right? So now the question, how we can ask them part of the money to... to to keep down here or to use it for the economic activity. 
for example, like in Singapore, Singapore, they have this, uh, like here, the EPF. So they said, okay, you keep some of the money in Singapore until you go back to Indonesia or go back to Malaysia, then only you can take down the money, take, take out the money back. So maybe that we can also propose to the Malaysian government that there's some form of like EPF eh, the, to be deducted from their income so that they keep it uh, here so that the money maybe can be used for development for the purpose of Malaysia and Indonesia. So that may be one of the idea as has been done in Singapore. Thank you, Tan Sri. Very good question. We overlook this kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dato, uh, I have uh, one question yeah. from our uh, students. How is the Islamic financing uh, trend for Western countries uh, since uh, which Muslim is minority? Yeah. Uh, Islamic finance huh? trend for uh, Western country. Huh? Islamic finance yeah. trend for Western country. Trend. Okay, very interesting question, Bo. Very interesting question. Very interesting. Summit finance in Western country. Very interesting. Currently, Bo, London is one of the main center of Islamic finance. You believe it or not? <laughs> today, today, London become one of the main center of Islamic finance. They are Western country. They are purely commercial banking, but they see the potential of and growth of the Islamic financial system, which is more fair, which is interest fee, which benefit more to the mass rather than to top wealth people. So they also now setting up financial in, uh, financing system in London, where if you know London is the major financial center of the world. Yeah. So we have like so-called bond, everything, also issue in London, surprise you. Islamic bank, uh, Islamic super bank in London, their issue is much bigger than maybe in Malaysia. So this is now uh, development very fast in the Islam, uh, in the Western country. I understand New York also want to set up same like in uh, London, the Islamic financial system. So we can see in my map just now, they are, the, they are growth area. There are much more good area in the Islamic financial system in the whole world. But I still believe, thank you for the seminar today, hopefully in future, that we must, Indonesia and Malaysia should be the champion, should be the main, not London, should be either Kuala Lumpur or Jakarta, should be the main. Sorry, I'm going to say that. Why, why, can't, why must a Western country like London and New York want to take Islamic financial system as the, as the champion, whereas we here, what are we going to do? So I'm afraid if he's still sleeping, sorry, Singapore may say he also want to open the Islamic Manager Center now. That is my answer. Thank oh. you. Forgive me. <laughs> yes. uh, quite good point of view. Uh, I, I also received uh, more information about uh, scholarship uh, specifically focused in uh, Islamic finance in uh, from more, uh, many universities uh, in England, I think yes. Uh, I, I I don't know. Maybe uh, um, Pak Pak Kwan, they have a bachelor in Islamic finance or not? They are having the program now. If the don't have, if don't the have, maybe ask Ibu Farah, Doctor Farah, to see the INSEF, the Islamic um, University in Malaysia, to collaborate with Ibu. INSEF is uh, owned by Malaysian government. It's a university, Islamic uh, finance university. They, they develop only for human resources for the Islamic planet. Maybe you can work together with this one, introduce the program in Pakwan. I believe they are very happy to do it. You know? Maybe dual degree or whatever. Yes, if, of course, uh, we will follow up the, uh, the offer, yeah, Bu Farah, yeah. Yeah, I will have Ibu Farah. If we, if we give him, you give her the, the the power to negotiate, I will bring him to see the industry. <laughs> no problem. Thank you very much, Dato. Maybe this is, will be in line also with the Campus Merdeka uh, model, yeah, Ibu uh, Retno. Yeah. We will talk later yeah. after this. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think Bu Insem too is a good uh, proposal that you go and see and see how we can cooperate on the Islamic 
uh, finance uh, subject degree eh, to to run together with uh, Pakuan. I, I, I think it's the one of the only university in the world now which only teach subject on Islamic finance. They don't teach on other subjects. We are not at that talk. We will follow up after this. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, I think there is uh, no questions yet. Uh, we now come to the end of the session. Uh, Amri, could you share the attendance list? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. so one question. Ada satu soalan ni. Operasi Datuk, salam Ustaz Saru. Saya oh, mau tanya oh. adakah sistem pembangunan syariah sudah sepenuhnya menggunakan sistem yang disyariahkan dalam agama Islam? Kalau memang sudah, mengapa masih ada biaya dikeluar secara tidak Islam? Maaf Datuk, saya senang untuk berkenaan membahasnya. Thanks. Well, uh, that's why now we are migrating. Sorry to say lah. We are migrating from the conventional banking to the Islamic banking. The problem, the conventional banking has to be structured earlier than the Islamic banking system. They much, much earlier. 1947, yeah, 1947. Hey, sorry, 1497, the first bank, commercial bank set up in Tuscano, Italy. That means they already set bank. Commercial bank is already existed 19, uh, 1497. Whereas our Islamic banking just starting 19th century, 1963, the first Islamic bank in Egypt. So now we are promoting Islamic banking system, Islamic finance system. We are trying to, to, to take over from the conventional banking system. So to Solan daripada tadi Nini, Nina tadi, uh, there's still a conventional banking system uh, in operation. I think even in future, you can uh, totally run Islamic financial system because they are non-Muslim, they still need the conventional system. So if the question said, why we still uh, run a conventional system if we have a fin uh, Islamic financial system, I think either today or in future, the conventional system still existent because there will be still uh, non-Muslim. But if this uh, Nina was looking into why uh, in um, our country, Malaysia and Indonesia, we have the Sharia compliant. Why are they still conventional system operating? Why people still borrow operational? Uh, uh, why people still borrow through the conventional? Well, this is where I said it's preferred of choice because if you totally don't have the conventional, which already existed for so long, suddenly you just say Islamic and people don't understand, there'll be havoc in the industry. So that's why we can still, like in Malaysia, this still, this dual system still in existence, which I think same thing happening in Indonesia. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Is there any other comments, uh, questions from the participants? I think uh, we have no more questions, Dato. Ada ga? Oh, sorry. Kejar. Saya tidak lihat di chat. Uh, mungkin ke Dato ada lagi. Perhaps ke yang lain. Probably. Ada. Tidak ada. 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 Sudah tidak ada. Tidak ada. Tidak ada. Sudah tidak ada. Still, still have any time to ask? Available. Boleh langsung ya? Boleh ya. langsung ya. Oh, Oke. Okay. Pak Arief, ada ya. yang mau ditambahkan? Boleh. Uh, Dato, uh, what, uh, in, in your opinion, what is the most, uh, uh, what key, key success uh, factors uh, to develop uh, the, the Islamic financial financing system in a country. Um, what is the case well, is the success uh, uh, factor? The key, key success uh, factor? Key, key success factor? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, if you ask me, 
I like the Islamic financial system because there no interest. <laughs> so for me, uh, that is the key lah. Uh, so because we know that when we borrow money with interest, we feel uncomfortable. Uh, we always say there is haram. So the key success now, we really need to tell the people regarding the, uh, the system is no interest and this is uh, Sharia compliance that you borrow money, you can sleep well, you're not going to be us in the after world. I think this is the key we have to uh, explain to the people. But uh, again, part in Malaysia, to surprise uh, the majority people who borrow the Islamic finance are non-Muslim. Uh, you're surprised. Because why? In Malaysia report through the central bank, most of the business people, non-Muslim, like to borrow Islamic finance because there's no interest element. If you delay in payment, they don't charge you overdue interest and there's no, no default in interest, all kind of thing. And uh, again, uh, if they follow strictly, they just, if they are partner with you in the business, if the business fail, they cannot make you a bankrupt because you are partner with them. So in Malaysia, the majority people who borrow the Islamic finance are non-Muslim. Very interesting if you uh, look into it. Thank you. Thank you. Boleh. Terima kasih, Pak. Boleh. Silakan. Bu Enok, masih boleh nanya? Silakan. Yes, Bu Nina. Uh, Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum. Maybe. Well, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm just uh, Indonesian, uh, use Indonesian language. Okay, in Bahasa, Bu. <laughs> Bahasa Indonesia, nggak apa-apa ya. Tidak apa-apa. Pak Dato, eh, Pak Prof Dato, saya mau tanya nih, ya. Uh, nggak tanya juga mungkin uh, bisa saran. Kalau nggak salah, uh, saya pernah belajar mengenai sedikit, walaupun sedikit ya, mengenai uh, uh, apa, apa, uh, Uh, apa namanya syariat Islam uh, ekonomi syariat Islam jadi kalau misalnya kita uh, misalnya bank ya meminjamkan uang seharusnya uh, kepada nasabahnya adalah untuk hal-hal uh, uh, yang produktif uh, dan uh, biasanya apa, apa, saya juga kata uh, ya dato apakah uh, saya salah atau tidak jadi kalau misalnya ada uh, nasabah yang meminjam uang kepada bank untuk hal-hal yang produktif itu seharusnya dari, dari pihak bank itu membina me, me, apa ya membimbing supaya uh, produktivitas itu berjalan dengan baik sehingga tidak menjadikan adanya uh, kerugian atau kepailitan jadi uh, diharapkan uh, di konsumen itu juga bisa uh, membayar uh, hutangnya dengan baik. Apakah demikian pada Prof. Dato? Mohon bimbingannya. Terima kasih. Ya. Baik. Dato? Uh, apa Bu? Boleh repeat? <laughs> oh, Oke. Okay. Saya sum up ya Dato. Jadi ya. Uh, jika ada uh, nasabah ke bank, kemudian uh, apa namanya ingin meminjam dari bank konvensional, nah Bank ini uh, diharapkan memberikan kayak semacam pembinaan, Dato. Enggak, bukan bank konvensional ya, oh. Bu. Ini bank syariah. Oh, bank syariah, ya. bank syariah. Uh, untuk memberikan pembinaan. Nah, how about your opinion about this situation, Dato? Pinjam duit dekat bank syariah ah. untuk pembinaan. Ah, pembinaan. Dia pinjam uang daripada bank syariah untuk yeah. konsumsi. Pembinaan, ya. Boleh ya? Reduction. Tidak masalah. Uh, yes. How about, uh, about your opinion about uh, the uh, pembinaan, uh, uh, yeah, like giving information uh, useful for the customers uh, that uh, about the benefit of uh, uh, what uh, pinjaman tadi, Dato? Yeah. Ya yeah, Bu, kalau di Malaysia, uh, construction pembinaan one of the main uh, bank finance untuk untuk Islamic finance. So tidak ada masalah Bu. Uh, Oke. Okay. Ya yeah, bagus ya. Memang seharusnya begitu ya Prof, kalau begitu ya. 
Jadi uh, apa yang diperoleh oleh pihak perbankan syariah itu juga merupakan uh, hasil bagi hasil akhirnya. Bukan uh, kalau yang saya lihat selama ini memang mungkin uh, belum semuanya ya Prof. Jadi masih apa ya seperti uh, sama saja sama hampir sama dengan konvensional. Jadi uh, pengembalian uh, sama dengan menggunakan rate uh, yang uh, apa uh, uh, apa namanya bunga yang uh, sama gitu. Ini yang memang seharusnya kan uh, kalau misalnya perusahaan itu dalam keadaan bangkrut juga kan harusnya uh, apa diberikan keringanan atau seperti apa. Ya mudah-mudahan uh, betul-betul Islamnya betul-betul syariatnya itu adalah betul-betul di dijalankan dengan baik ya, Prof. Thank you. Ya, uh, Bu Nina ya. menambahkan bahwa uh, apa namanya uh, untuk uh, konsep bank syariah ini bagus karena uh, kalau misalnya di bank syariah ini kalau ada kerugian uh, uh, kita bisa share dato. Jadi uh, apa namanya yang sudah tadi dato ungkapkan bahwa dalam bank syariah itu ada share benefit, begitu juga ada share kerugian, sehingga tidak merugikan salah satu pihak. Mungkin saya sum up demikian, Dato. Ya, yeah. oke okay, Bu. Very interesting question. Very interesting question. It's the same problem in Malaysia. Itu pasal kita banyak lagi mau belajar, Bu. Saya, saya jawab macam ini, ya. saya jawab begini. Di Malaysia pun problem dia macam ini. Kita Islamic finance, tetapi di Malaysia bukan gunakan undang-undang Islam. Kita pasti pakai civil law. Jadi dalam Islamic finance kita buat kontrak sama dia. Kita kontrak tu sama dia with the bank by right. Bila kita tak bayar atau you fail, they use that contract to go to the civil law to to prosecute us. Hmm. This is where the problem now, Bu. Itu kata tadi, banyak lagi kita kena buat. Di Malaysia ada test case. Ada test case, ya? Ini test case. Satu orang pembinaan pinjam buat development. Macam Ibu Nina tadi, ya? Then the project fail. The project fail, sepatutnya sama-sama tanggung rugi. Bank rugi, orang ini pemaju rugi. Jadi sekarang bank kata dia tidak mau rugi, dia mau saman untuk dapat wang dia balik. Jadi oleh kerana di Malaysia tidak ada Islamic punya law, punya court. There's no Islamic law court in Malaysia. Islamic yeah. law court in Malaysia, maybe in Malaysia same thing, only for family. Nikah, cerai, harta anak-anak saja. Ada yeah. dan that, tak boleh pakai. Jadi dia bank Islam ni tadi guna kontrak tu go to the civil court. Civil court says yes there's a contract now. I based on civil law, I don't know about syariah law. I now based on contract, you now feel you have to pay back the bank. So there is a test case, test case in Malaysia now. The problem if you sign the contract with the bank, the bank kalau rugi they still kalau dia tidak ada hati perut They still mau minta wang balik dia boleh pergi ke civil court. This is the problem now that we need to develop. I already told the Malaysian government why should we follow contract if you said this is Islamic finance but when you have issue why go to the civil court? Oh because Malaysia there's no Sharia civil court uh, Sharia commercial law yet. Maybe in Indonesia this is the same problem I don't know. So this is where I said We are need lot more to develop. That's why we need lot this discourse. We bring highlight the thing in your university. We bring highlight here. So we have to talk to the government. We have to have a. You have the Islamic banking, but where is the Islamic commercial law? You know, sir. No? There's no Islamic commercial law in the court. In the court, there's no Islamic commercial law. Our Islamic court in Malaysia, Sharia court, only for kawin cerai. Nikah dengan harta anak dia. Ini yang masalah yang ibu tu kata tadi. Bank Bank Indonesia tu masih lagi boleh uh, menuntut melalui civil court. Uh, di di Malaysia memang kita sudah kalah. Yang memang keadaannya begitu. Bu. Baik, uh, Bu Nina, bagaimana? Ya memang. Uh, tapi ya, uh, <laughs> saya sih senang sekali ya dengan adanya memang 
sudah lama ya ini, tapi uh, justru berkembang uh, jauh lebih baiknya itu ada uh, negara-negara lain malah yang um, bukan Islamik ya, tapi yang memang uh, apa namanya walaupun bagaimana kita bersyukur dengan adanya uh, apa namanya uh, bank yang uh, dengan menggunakan syariah ini uh, setidaknya kita mungkin uh, mengurangi ya mengurangi uh, banyak kesalahan yang kita terima walaupun memang belum sempurna ya pada tuk ya mudah-mudahan semakin ke sana nanti akan semakin sempurna lagi terima kasih banyak pada to atas semua uh, apa ya uh, penjelasan-penjelasan yang pada to berikan kepada kami mudah-mudahan uh, nanti pada to bisa memberikan lagi uh, pengarahan ya bagi kami untuk yang selanjutnya terima kasih pada to assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ya, yeah, uh, I think uh, the time also is a constraint. That it's already 10:54, so I think we uh, actually it's uh, quite interesting uh, to discuss more and more. I think two hours is not enough, but uh, yes, we can. Uh, follow with another event probably Dato, uh, perhaps uh, Dato will come to another event. Uh, for today event, we have uh, come to an end of the sessions about uh, the Islamic finance. Uh, we can uh, now uh, have a, a full, a fruitful knowledge uh, that uh, the development of Islamic finance uh, for, from 14, Uh, years, uh, 1400 years ago, is actually uh, parallel with the birth of Islam. Uh, and about the attendance list, uh, there will be attendance list uh, from uh, for uh, students, but also lecturers. Uh, we shared in the chat rooms. Uh, please, uh, uh, participant can open the link uh, we shared. Uh, in the chat room. Meanwhile, uh, Alhamdulillah, rangkaian public lecture uh, telah selesai dilaksanakan dengan baik. Uh, kami ucapkan uh, terima kasih to our speaker, our beloved speaker, Professor Dr. Uh, Dr. Haji Abdul Murad. Uh, and then we also thank you for the audience. Uh, it's very uh, A fruitful session for us uh, together and uh, on behalf of the host and a committee we would like to extend once again our appreciation to you all in participating in participating in the event uh, me myself and uh, Rusmana pamit undur terima kasih thank you Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih, pamit. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum. Oh, jangan live dulu, Bapak Ibu. Kita foto bersama dulu. Silakan Ustaz Samri. Take a picture first, Dato. Baik, Bapak Ibu. Sebelum berakhir acara, silakan Bapak-Bapak untuk mengganggu jalannya kegiatan sesi foto bersama. Baik, untuk slide pertama, dalam hitungan tiga semuanya sudah siap. Yang belum dibuka, silakan sekali lagi dibuka. One, two, three. Baik, slide kedua. Ini masih belum nyala. One, two, three. Baik, slide selanjutnya. One, two, three. Terbaik berikutnya 
One, two, three. Baik. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Sesi foto sudah selesai. Saya kembalikan kepada uh, Ibu Enok Rusman. Baik, uh, terima kasih untuk semuanya. Uh, boleh uh, link. Tato, thank you very much. Teman-teman dari Malaysia. Tanya, terima kasih. Teman-teman dari Malaysia. Terima Pak Arief, Assalamualaikum. Dani, Bu Sri, terima kasih banyak semua. Assalamualaikum. Semoga sehat semua. Mudah-mudahan ada kesempatan kita untuk uh, offline. Kita ketemu lagi, Dato. Amin. Amin. Sehat semua. Mangga, Assalamualaikum. Selamat malam, warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bu Enok nggak ada itu ya? Nggak ada daftar hadir ya? Ada. Ada di chat room. Oh, belum lihat. Bentar, <laughs> bentar. Okay. Bueno, nanti kira-kira ada sharing materi nggak ya, Bu? Ada materi. Ada. Oh iya, terima kasih. Atau Pak Amri boleh di-share uh, materialnya di chat room? Baik, baik, siap, Bu. Terima kasih, Dato. Bu terima Suraya. kasih, Dato, atas uh, knowledge-nya. Saya izin lift ya, Dato Dato Murad. Materi sudah di share screen. Bu Hara di mana itu Bu Hara? Saya sudah di Pak. Di Trenggane. Di sana COVID gimana COVID? Sama dengan Datuk, hanya beda Datuk di Seremban saya di Trangganu, Pak Arief. Oh. Gimana ini kondisi sana? COVID gimana? Ini kita masih full, uh, kalau di saya masih work from home, uh, Pak Arief. Oh. Tapi ini kami... apa, kasusnya mereda, meningkat, banyak, sedikit? Masih fluktuatif. Kalau di Tenggaru kadang-kadang naik, kadang-kadang turun. Tapi belum dibuka semuanya kegiatan umum. Hmm. Oh, ya. okay. Begitu saya izin pamit, Pak Arief. Ya. Terima, ya, terima, terima, terima kasih. 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 Ter